You uh, were talking about, and you've kind of done this, but you, there was another wonderful line of yours, uh, an Eliotism, if I, if I may. Uh, and I'm going to ask you, you, you to paint the picture for us of someone whose life really does or did consist of private jets, stretch limos, international film festivals, press junkets, and reconcile that life with what you termed the monotony of celebrity. Hmm. It's so hard to explain some of these things to people who haven't been in, in the experience. It just is. You know, I, just, uh, I think of what it was like for uh, Neil Armstrong and the handful of other astronauts who went to the moon, and they show up at a cocktail party uh, six years later, and somebody is introduced to Buzz Aldrin and says, well, what it was... How, how did they explain that experience? They just came back from a different uh, planet. I've been to international film festivals with um, some extraordinarily famous people. Been on their private jets and in their super stretch limos with the um, jacuzzi tub in the back on top of the trunk and the stripper pole in the front or whatever it might be and the hotel rooms for $20,000 a night in Paris and all that business, you know. At the end of the experience, the walking the red carpet, the introduction of the movie, whatever it was, and we would come back to the hotel and I would just talk with the person before going back to my own room, you know, and just try to relax them before the masseuse arrived or the person who removes their makeup and prepares them for bed. One of the things that I noted was the monotony. For the, the fans, for the reporters, for the people outside, this was it. You know, this is what you see as the lead on E.T or Access Hollywood. You see Brad and Angelina walking down the red carpet in Cannes. You see this mass hysteria. You see this uh, adulation. You see this stuff that is uh, at one time only reserved for emperors and empresses, right? Mm -hmm. What do you think it's like for Brad and Angelina at the end of the night when they close the door and the last of the assistants have exited the suite and they've said good night to the agent, to the manager, to the business manager, to the three assistants, to the two nannies, to the masseuse, to the accountant, to the business manager, to the publicist, to the media consultant, to the private doctor, to the personal chef, to the chauffeur, to the person, personal photographer, and the executive who looks after all of them and the unknown person who looks after him, and all 20 of them are outside of the room, and they take off their makeup and they lay down together and know they have a 6 a.m. wake-up call to do it all over again tomorrow to begin a 20 interview junket day to promote the movie or the thing. That's when the monotony of celebrity kicks in. Now, I picked an extreme example to make the point. Right. But if you reduce it to your you know, average working actor, actress, who's schlepping around uh, Cannes tonight or any of the other places, to some degree or another, they experience the same stuff. And keep in mind, 
they can't wake up in the morning and say, I've got a great idea. Just to get the, all this junk out of our head, let's take a walk down the beach. Right, exactly. Let's uh -huh. just get some fresh air and be like everybody else. Let's just pretend that we're not who we are. Well, you can't do that either. So your world becomes reduced to this little enclosure. And you become Howard Hughes, you become Elvis, you become Michael Jackson. And the world is reduced to just isolation. That's the monotony of celebrity. Be careful what you wish for in the fame game. Mm 